5 trillion yen. That is what Honda is spending for the development of electric vehicles. And thank God Honda is not going to make them boring. We have promises of an NSX and possibly an S2000 EV in the future. <laughs> Honda has given us a ton to sift through. We're over at their newsroom and we'll break down the entire press release, give you all the details. But first, we're going to go through the images. If you're new to the channel, my name is Kirk. I talk about Japanese and Korean cars. Make sure to subscribe if you're not so you do not miss big news updates and industry shaking news like this we have today. We have two battery electric sports cars. One is a specialty. That's what this one is over here. And to me, that's saying S2000. And this one is the Halo flagship, which is saying Acura slash Honda NSX. Uh, this one doesn't even have side mirrors. And to me, when I first see it, I think Koenigsegg, something super exotic. I mean, the NSX has always been pretty exotic looking. It doesn't look anything else like uh, its Honda brethren or Acura brethren for that matter. What's interesting, we have like the Tron inspired LED wheels or tires. And what is also cool is that we have like this electric smoke rising from each end of the car. Um, just interesting. Maybe it's steam. Maybe, maybe, maybe it's not an EV. Maybe it's a fuel cell with the steam. No, I'm just kidding. It's totally battery electric. And then we also have this vehicle, which is like their little sports coupe EV that they had a concept for a few years ago. But this looks a lot more aggressive, even underneath uh, this, this tarp here. So we have this soft, rounded edged prologue like concept that we had a few years back when we first saw the Honda E concept. Well, that sports car never came to be, but it looks like they were saving it for, for this. Now, this to me is seemingly closer to production just for the fact that we have mirrors on this vehicle. Now, in certain markets, they'll be able to sub those mirrors out for digital cameras on the side it, with, with screens on the inside, but depending on how much weight that adds and how much aerodynamics you're sacrificing, it, it, they might not go that route. But we also have illuminated Honda badges on each one of these. We have no words for when these will be coming, probably in the second half, of the 2020s for sure i'd say 2026 plus when honda will have their own platform but we have so much more to cover today i just want to start off with a home run with these guys okay so this slide is also telling i wanted to talk about their their big product onslaught coming 30 models globally by 2030 high value evs we just kind of previewed the nsx flagship ev you have small van like k cars like the N box or the N1. This vehicle right here is obviously the Honda E, and then this is probably like the HRV or the outgoing HRV. Then we also have the step wagon. I think that's what this is. We'll have an electrified step wagon. This is kind of hard to tell, but it's probably the Accord or Civic. This guy right here is the Odyssey. There's no confusing there. So we'll have a fully battery electric Odyssey in the works. That's pretty exciting to put some heat on the Volkswagen ID bus. And then we also have a Ridgeline. So yes, Honda is confirming a fully electric Ridgeline. Now, of course, that's going to happen when they're going to be fully battery electric or just fully zero emission vehicles because they are doing fuel cells still. That's going to happen by 2040, I believe. So it's only a matter of time, but it is cool to kind of see Honda just saying, hey, every single segment, every single vehicle that our customers know and love is going to be fully battery electric or have fuel cell counterparts. Over the next 10 years, Honda will allocate approximately 5 trillion yen, which is $40 billion. Honda is working on all solid state batteries, and they'll have a production line starting spring of 2024. So Honda has been simplifying things to not only increase production, but also to reduce expenses. And as of today, the total number of variations at the trim and option level for global models has been reduced to less than one half of the number in 2018. And the target is to reduce by one third by 2025. As for cost associated with global automobile production, Honda is on track to achieve its 10% reduction target compared to the recorded cost in 2018. Now, I mainly cover just automobiles on the channel, but don't forget, Honda also makes jets, outboard engines, snowblowers, scooters, motorcycles, etc., etc., etc. So let's talk about battery procurement because that is the most important thing and the most costly thing when it comes to battery electric vehicles. So what is Honda's strategy? Well, now and for the time being, Honda will ensure stable procurement of liquid 
lithium ion batteries in each region by strengthening the external partnership. So in North America, which is the majority of you guys watching this, Honda will procure Ultium batteries from GM. We already knew that. They just announced a really inexpensive, small, compact crossover HRV electric thing coming by 2027. Um, separate, aside from GM, Honda is also exploring the possibility of creating a joint venture company for battery production. Let the guesses begin. Is it going to be LG Chem like uh, General Motors is doing to create the Ultium stuff? That would be their number. That's my guess for the number one likelihood for their uh, joint venture, which is definitely going to happen. They, they say a possibility of creating a joint venture, but they definitely will. So LG Chem is the first one that comes to mind. Um, if we're talking about Koreans, possibly SK Innovation of Samsung. Samsung's in there working with uh, manufacturers as well. Panasonic is still on the table. I believe Panasonic has supplied a lot of their batteries for their hybrids and such. So interestingly, there's no mention of Panasonic on this list. In China, one of Honda's biggest markets, Honda will strengthen their co collaboration with CATL, which is the largest battery manufacturer in the world that I'm aware of. And they also put batteries in the Toyota BZ4X all-wheel drive model. And in Japan, Honda will procure batteries for many EVs from Envision AESC. And if my memory serves me correct, that's who Nissan works with uh, really heavily. Um, I believe Envision might also be owned by a Chinese company, but they are Japanese based, if that makes sense. And then for battery procurement in the second half of the 2020s, this is where stuff gets really exciting because we're talking future chemistries, uh, solid state batteries. Honda decided to build a demonstration line for solid state batteries, investing approximately 43 billion with the goal to make it operational in spring of 2024. And they aim to adopt its next generation batteries to models to be introduced to the market in the second half of the 2020s. Now shifting gears, well, EVs don't really shift gears. So picking up speed to introduction of EVs uh, away from battery procurement. So let's talk about North America here. In 2024, Honda will introduce two mid to large size EV models currently being developed jointly with General Motors. We also know of the one happening in 2027, which is even a smaller model. So that's at least three crossovers uh, jointly made with General Motors here. Uh, so we know the all new Prolong SUV coming out in 2024, but Acura also has one coming out based off the Cadillac like Lyric coming in 2024. We don't have a name for that yet. ADX has been trademarked, but I think that could be a small compact crossover slotting in underneath the RDX. That would be an amazing vehicle for them. Maybe based off the upcoming HRV. We'll see. Anyways, uh, in China, Honda will introduce a total of 10 new EV models by 2027. Here in North America, we'll have four, I believe. In Japan, in early 2024, Honda will introduce a commercial use mini EV model at the 1 million dollar price range or 1 million yen price range. Then Honda is planning to make a timely introduction of personal use mini EVs and EV SUVs. Okay, pretty cool. Second half of the 2020s where it gets real spicy as things really start uh, accelerating. But I love how Honda still is a conserved Japanese company because they say, assuming it will become the time of the popularization of EVs. But Honda will begin introduce, introducing the best EVs from a global perspective. So in 2026, Honda will begin adopting Honda e-architecture, an EV platform that combines a hardware platform and software platform. So the first thing come to, comes to mind is the upcoming joint venture between them and Sony. There's no mention of Sony at all in this article. So I thought that was really interesting because they're talking about General Motors. We'll start seeing products and collaboration between Honda and Sony, especially when we're talking about software guys. Sony is really good on the software and compared to Honda anyway. Through the alliance with GM, Honda is planning to introduce affordable EVs in 27, which I already mentioned with a cost of range that is competitive to gasoline powered vehicles starting from North America. Does that mean I'll have a solid state battery? No. I think that will still be far too costly by 2027. Look, I don't think solid state batteries will be in affordable cars for most people until the 2030s. And they'll be in limited availabilities, either in hyper cars or super cars, just really expensive cars to justify the cost of those solid state batteries. It's not necessarily a race to who can come out with a car with solid state batteries first. It's who can mass produce them affordably first. And that is the real game changer. Honda, Nissan, Toyota, all working hard at that. 
Through these initiatives, Honditive is planning to launch 30 EV models globally by 2030 with a full lineup. Now for EV production in China, Honda is planning to build a dedicated EV plant in Guangzhou as well as Wuhan. Honda is planning for a dedicated EV production line also in North America, which uh, is I thought was already pretty evident. Um, based off of previous press releases that Honda has made. And, you know, most of the Honda vehicles, like almost all of them, 99% probably of the Honda vehicles for the North American market are built here in North America. So strengthening the ideas of connected and software technologies, don't want to get into this too much, but I just think of paying for software like full self-driving, stuff like that. I think all the manufacturers are going to have a pay for play service set up where if you're going a long trip and you need that autonomous software, you can download that update overnight, then take your trip and you'll have like full self driving for like a, a month or something. I think that's where these automakers are going because they want to make money on their EVs. When their EVs last much longer than these gas models, in theory, as long as they don't blow up like or have huge recalls as a tons of other EVs already have. If we can guarantee reliability better than current vehicles, then they have to make money through software or other services. This is all about their investments, which doesn't get me that excited. They talk about startups and other technologies that they're developing. Anyway, sports models, this is the first thing we talked about today. Um, we don't have a time frame for them. We don't have anything other than they will embody Honda's universal sports mindset and distinctive characteristics, and they will be fun for its customers and offer the joy of driving. You know, as much as I'm excited for these sports cars, I really would love to see a Ridgeline EV as well as an Odyssey EV. Odyssey is arguably the best minivan on the market, even though being old and not quite as up to date in some ways as its competitors, but the, the functionality of it's there, the comforts there, the layout is there on that vehicle. Just watch my review on the Odyssey. So that's what I'm excited about as a father of a bunch of little girls. But what are you most excited about for, for Honda in this big reveal, the electrification? $40 billion for the research and development of batteries and electric vehicles by 2030. But I got to end it there. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next video. Peace out.